Peggy, I suppose the first one is, um, can you give us an update on Mitch McGovern and how he's travelling at the moment? Yeah, he had some scans. Uh, the good the good thing was the scans didn't show a lot. Um, but, uh, yeah, like he ran today, so that's a real positive. Um, he's, he's probably unlikely this week, but uh, we haven't ruled him out. What, what, what did the scans actually show? Was there, is there was it an isolated incident? Is it a build-up of blood? Is there a proper jaggy moment? Or? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure the exact... Uh, the exact results, but um, I know there's probably uh, the results are, are more favourable than we probably thought. So in terms of it, it's not a lot. I think it's it's just something minor. Um, it will just depend on how he goes this week. Um, he ran today, which surprised me. So I didn't I didn't think he'd be running this early on. So um, hopefully he uh, recovers quickly. Do you know what you the said- process is from here for him to prove that he's ready for Friday? Oh, he'll have to he'll have to get up to high speed running by the end of the week, um, and then uh, depending on how he's going, that would be my guess. But uh, to be honest, as a coach, you generally you're back in your medical staff, get to uh, later in the week match committee, and they'll tell you whether he's available or not. But um, he'll have to tick some boxes along the way. If he if doesn't, he, if he doesn't, yeah, sorry, Maxi, but how does that affect team balance? Like, what's your personal view on how on who, how he would be replaced? Oh, look, this year uh, we've had some opportunities. Obviously, Mitch was out for a while and uh, we tried probably a couple of different options throughout the year. So the positive for us is that we've, uh, we've got a lot of depth in that area and we've got quite a few guys that can come in and play play a role. So, no, we're, we're very comfortable that we'll still put a team out there that will uh, win this week. What sort of player do you think would be the best, would be first in line to either take his spot or to come into the team? Yeah, well, we've got some options. Uh, Curtly Hampton's back up playing, started the year really well. Wayne Malira has been really strong. Uh, Troy Menzel's form over the last few weeks probably been, kicked the most uh, goals and his pressure's been really good. So um, we've definitely got options there. And then if you wanted to go taller, you've probably got John O'Beach in the air, uh, Andy Otten, uh, Alex Keith played forward for us in, at the SNFL this year as well. So um, we're really comfortable that we've got plenty of depth in that area. How do you like the balance of your forward line if you were to, say, go from having a, a taller McGovern to a smaller player? I mean, you, it's not like you're short. All of a sudden, you've got plenty of other tall forwards. How do you like that balance as a forwards coach? Yeah, oh, we probably just want to play a really balanced side. Um, and at the end of the day, it's about playing your role. And whoever that player is, at certain times, they're going to have to compete in the air and they've got to compete on the ground. And one of the things Mitch does well is he does both. His pressure at ground level is very good and, and his ability to compete in the air. So um, we'll structure up uh, in a manner that allows us to do both those things. Um, if we're not winning it in the air, we want to win it on the ground. So um, we just got to get our balance right, make sure we share the workload. We, we haven't relied on one person all year, and this game will be no different whether Mitch plays or doesn't play. It'll be a collective, it'll be a group, and uh, the players will play to make sure that the team has the best chance of winning. So how did he actually do the injury on Saturday, Tiggy? Was it just during training, or did he just sort of come, pull up sore Sunday morning? Yeah, no, he, he, he pulled up a sore in training. So he felt a little bit of tightness in training. So. Um, we, uh, we had a good little hit out of, of match sim and uh, yeah, I think he, in during that he, he just felt it at some stage. And it's no relation to the hamstring he had earlier in the season? Not that I know of. I think it's the other leg. I think. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think it's the other okay. leg. Um, just on that training session Saturday or that sort of match sim, did Jake Lever and Pete Greenwood play in that? Uh, yes, they did. Uh, they all play. I think we had everyone out there playing, um, along with Rory. So um, it, was, it was a good hit out. Um, we, we've had a really good prep. Uh, the training and the energy was really good, to be honest. The way the guys attacked it, um, the intensity was something we were very impressed with as a coaching group, and we think we're really prepared well for this week's game. Would Mitch be in any doubt for the following Saturday, all going well? Uh, possibly. Uh, it's unsure at this stage. Uh, we'd like to think that uh, if, if we can get through this week, that. Uh, that, he, that he'll be available, but uh, the, these sort of injuries, you're just not sure. It depends how he recovers from it, but um, we're very, very hopeful that um, if it's not this week, that'll be next week that, uh, that he can get up. And uh, the biggest challenge right now is to make sure we, we, we give ourselves that opportunity and a great challenge against Geelong this week here in uh, front of our home crowd and fans. We're, we're really excited by that. Sorry, what's his, what's his mindset like, given his troubles this year and what he's gone through with the contract and all that? Is he almost resigned to not playing or is he going to push for the prelude? Oh no, he's definitely doing everything he can and from 
from as soon as it happened, you watch any mice and go about it. No, he's he's very team first person, and uh, right now, obviously for himself, he wants to play, but he wants to get up and, and play a role for the team. His energy um, has been really good, has been really positive. So no, I've got no doubt that he's going to give himself every chance to uh, to get up if if he can. Um, Tiggy, just on the game itself, Friday night. Obviously, there was a lot of talk about the Giants game. Uh, Qualcomm final, the national anthem, you guys obviously stood a bit differently than what we've seen in other teams in the past. Is that something you guys will do again on Friday? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think there's uh, been a little bit more drawn into it than... Uh than there probably was from it, but um, oh, it worked. Maybe we should. Uh, I'm not sure the boys will we'll have to wait and see till uh, Friday night. What about the Cats themselves? How much confidence do you take out of your second performance against them this year? Oh, look, I think both teams are going to go in pretty confident. Geelong played really well last uh, weekend. Uh, we think we're playing some good footy. Um, I think that win was really important to us to give us a bit of belief, uh, particularly against Geelong. So I think as, as a collective, I think uh, we've prepared really well. Uh, it's going to be a really tough challenge against them, but we're in a position where we think if we play our best footy, then we'll come away with the, uh, with the win. What about Patrick Dangerfield going forward? Like, obviously, we saw that great effect you know, last Friday night. What plans do you guys have in place if that happens again? <laughs> Yeah, if it happens again, he does it most weeks. Uh, he started forward this week, but most weeks he plays forward. Um, look, to be honest, uh, they're a really good side and you don't want to spend too much time focusing about one player and it's probably the same as us. Well, we value our team effort and um, the other night they had a lot of um, players that contributed well. So um, we'll, we'll prepare for both, but in, in, in a whole, it, it's the whole team we'll be preparing for and playing a style that we think can beat the Geelong Football Club, no, no individuals. I know that Danger's been here before, but hostile prelim crowd, what are you expecting their response to Patrick Dangerfield to be this week? Oh, I expect them to be similar to they were to every GWS player out there. I thought the crowd was outstanding, their voice, uh, the boys talked about how our crowd really got behind them and I, I've got no doubt they'll... Um, they'll do that again this week. So, um, no, I think the players uh, are really pumped. The energy levels for this game, I think, are going to be through the roof, particularly with the, the crowd getting behind them. And uh, we're very lucky that we have this uh, ability to have a home crowd that uh, are so vocal. Josh Jenkins said that he wanted to show danger that maybe he could have been a Brownlow medalist and a Premiership player. Mm -hmm. Is that a sort of unanimous thought amongst the group? Oh, they're very good friends. So you've got to remember that they're, uh, they're quite close. So uh, I think they're having a bit of fun. Um, at the end of the day, uh, we've got a game this Friday night that we want to win, and that, that'll be our focus. Uh, it won't be on individuals and words are words. At the end of the day, it'll come down to actions. And that's what we need to go out and do. We need to go out and play well and, uh, and bring the intensity and the effort that we, we know we do when we're playing well. Sorry, Terry, I just got to quickly ask you about the ticking prices. Everyone's going off about them. Your thoughts on that? Are they well placed? Uh, it's a great question. I'm not sure what the ticketing prices are, so I may need to do a little bit more research. I got I got worded up before I came in here, but that wasn't on one of the topics, so I do apologise. Um, I'm hoping I get one for my wife, and then uh, that'll, that'll, that'll keep me happy. <laughs>